I went to the library yesterday to return some things, including my 28 CD set of Barack Obama's A Promised Land. And I said, I'm only going in to return stuff. I'm only going in to return stuff. And I walked out of there with five new books. It makes me feel like I'm cheating on my actual books on my bookshelves. Hi, BookTube, it's Kim at Middle of the Book March. I am doing a Steve Donahue original tag, the books and life tag. And this has been, I've seen so many of these and it's a really good one. I don't want Steve to get too puffed up, even more puffed up than he already is. <laughs> Hi, Steve. So I thought I would do the books and life tag and I really like this one because it doesn't require anybody to go and find any books. It's just talking, it's just chatting. So let's get going. There's 11 prompts. And the first one is on a scale of one to 10, one being a normal person and 10 being the late Harold Bloom, how much are books and reading a part of your life? On a scale of one to 10, I would put myself between seven and eight. I don't work in a literary job. I don't work in any type of book industry, but every other time of my day is consumed with either reading books, talking about books, reading about books, reading literary articles. I have been in a book group for 20 years. I read every day. I read articles at work about either authors or books coming out. I'm, it's all in my head. It's everything that's in my head <laughs> is <laughs> book related or reading related. Because after joining BookTube, that's even ratcheted up so much more because now I'm considering is this, you know, what could be my next video content? What could I put in in my midweek video? Um, if I go to a bookstore, do I do a little, do I take a little video of it? Do I put it in a vlog? It's, it's all up in there. And I'm a little pissy that I have to work full time because otherwise every single moment of my day would be consumed by books and reading. And I, it's funny because I've seen some other people rate themselves and so many people have rated themselves so much lower than I would have thought, considering we're on BookTube to begin with. When you're on BookTube, you're, a lot of your free time is consumed with reading, with books, with content creation, with creating videos. Um, I've seen, there's several BookTubers that I subscribe to who are doing three and four videos a week. I don't know how you do that but that's an enormous time investment. So your rating should be higher. <laughs> Number two, where does your personal library stand right now in relation to the rest of your life? Do you have more books now than you ever had, fewer, and how has your library changed? I have far more books now than I ever had. And I keep a catalog app on my phone. Um, I wish I remembered what it's called i will put it in a text on the in the video but it's a scanner so i scanned every single one of my personal books kitty cat over there and i it's all in this app on my phone and i can download it to excel i can see i can sort everything the way i want to so whenever i buy a new book i catalog it when i unhaul books or get rid of books i delete them i have never had this many books i don't know if I want to tell you the number of books I own. Um, I am around 1,575 books. And I've never owned that many. I've got multiple bookshelves in my house. I now, my husband now has said that he loves looking at books. He's not a reader. He, he'll, he'll read something once in a while, but he loves the books. He just loves looking at them <laughs> because to him it's, it's art, I think, the same way. Um, how has my library changed? I've added a, an enormous amount of classics. I have gotten rid of books that I've either read and really didn't like and didn't need to keep. I've added books that are um, things I never would have found on my own had I not seen them on somebody else's channel. I have discovered books that I am so excited to get to and it's, it's matured. I think that's a really good word to use. It's definitely changed over time and it's my reading taste has matured. Number three, take a mental step back and ask yourself, what is the most likely first bookish impression a newcomer would have in your home? 
my house when you walk into it is open. So when you walk in my front door, and I'll insert pictures here. The first picture is my living room wall. So you walk in my front door and you're right in my living room and that wall is to the left. So it, it you can't miss it. And then the second picture is a, the set of bookcases that we bought a couple of months ago. And that wall is in my dining room. Those two bottom shelves are since filled, <laughs> of course. And then I have a tall three shelf bookcase in my dining room and my bedroom is lined with bookshelves. So anybody who comes into my house immediately walks in the door and, and their head turns left and their eyes start to bulge out. And the first comment I hear is, wow, that's a lot of books. And then the second one is, have you read all of them? And no, I haven't because I don't separate my books from with between read and not read. So they're all, they're all mixed together. And it's, it's unavoidable to see everything when you walk into my house. So it's kind of funny when I've had some delivery people, especially when they've delivered bookcases and different pieces of furniture, they'll walk in and they'll be holding a piece of furniture and their head will turn and they'll just look. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's cute. Number four, how often, if ever, gulp, do you clean or reorganize your books? I, I dust them <laughs> when I remember. I don't often reorganize. I had a major reorganization months ago where I completely separated out my fiction and nonfiction. They were kind of mixed together. Um, I have a bookcase just for theology. I have um, some of the bookcases in my bedroom are mostly for newer acquisitions. And I, I have almost no formal organization, except I try to keep all the same authors together. So I don't often reorganize. If I get rid of books, I'll free up space and I'll move some books from other locations that make sense. That's about it. But I do dust them. I don't clean anything. Um, let's see, number five, on average, how many books do you acquire in a given week? Let's see. <laughs> um, that's a really good question. On average, I would have to say, oh boy, I, I this is a major guess because I don't really know. Maybe four or five, but actually, you know, that's not really an average. There are some weeks it's zero. There are some that it's five. There are others where I've gotten rid of 10 or 20 books and I've brought in three. There are some days I've received multiple shipments and I've received eight. It's all over the place. So I don't really know what an average is. A couple every week at least. Number six, what song is your current earworm? Girl on Fire by Alicia Keys. And if you watch my last video, you'll know why. <laughs> Number seven, what percentage percentage I can speak. What percentage of your self-control do you retain in a well-stocked bookshop? Anytime I go into a new bookshop or a bookshop that sells new books, it's, it's, I, I never doubt that they're going to be well-stocked. But when I walk into a used bookshop that is well-stocked, the minute I walk in the door, my eyes just scan the entire store and I become breathless for about 10 seconds. I can't speak. I'm like a kid going to see Santa Claus. And then once I've gathered my wits again, the first sentence I say to my husband is, here, hold my purse. And he usually finds a chair and he'll sit and I'll just wander. Uh, Self-control? No. No. Number eight, do you ever feel the need to take a break from, from books? If so, what form does it take? No, I don't feel the need to take a break. I read every single day and I read a, usually read a lot and I love it. The only, the only thing I would consider taking a break is watching some show that I like or uh, I'll sit and watch booktube. I like to do that at the end of the day because that's when I'm getting a little too tired to concentrate on reading. But I've been reading already for probably about an hour. Sometimes I read more than that, especially on a weekend. So I don't f ever feel a need to take a break from books because if I'm not reading a book, I'm buying books, I am going to library sales, I'm filming a YouTube video, 
I'm watching booktube, I don't have that need to take a break. Books are the first activity that I have. They are my hobby. They are um, my passion. So there is no need to take a break. There's other things I like to do. I, there's plenty of things I love to do, but books and reading are number one. Number nine, when you meet a new person, how long does it take you to bring up books? That's funny. I don't often meet new people, especially in the last year and a half, two years. But if I meet a new person and have the chance to have a conversation, it usually comes up pretty quickly. And, uh, um, or, or if it's a kind of an event where I've, there are other people there that I know, they almost always bring up how much I read and that I have a YouTube channel and that type of thing. Um, it's kind of funny because there was a point where it was mostly work related and somebody would introduce me to somebody else and they'd be like, you wouldn't believe how much she reads or she's got a booktube channel, you, here it is, it's, and they'll write it down. So it's, it's again, it's kind of cute. Um, number 10, have you given any thought, made any provisions for your personal library after you croak? I probably should because it's 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 growing. But I figure by the time I'm ready to croak, my daughters would have demanded that I start removing many books and they will have just allowed me one small three case bookshelf for me to bring to the home. And <laughs> that's what I feel like is going to happen. There'll be a lot of donation. And number 11, are you known among your friends and loved ones for your weird and probably unhealthy relationship with books? Absolutely. I'm known as my, my immediate extended family believes I've read everything there is to read. No, I have not, clearly. Uh, my friends know how much I read and how obsessed I am. One of my best friends I work with, and she'll ask me before every weekend, so you going to any library sales this weekend? And, you know, my family is all aware. Everybody knows that I am a freak. I really am a freak about books. I read so much. I don't know many more people that read as much as I do or that are as interested in books in general as I am. So yes, that's me. That's how I'm known among family and friends and quite often acquaintances. So yeah, I, and it's interesting. I started to think about Steve's first question be, from rating from one to 10 and compared to Harold Bloom you could also put compared to Steve Donahue, but way back in the day when I was still in college, I was I was naive to the point where I had no idea there was anything called library science. And it, was, it wasn't until it was too late for me to kind of make any changes because I would go back in time and become a librarian. I would go back and get a degree in, in library science and have that be my lifelong career. And I went to high school with a woman who is now a library director of a larger library in a New Hampshire town close to me, about an hour away from me. And I'm a little jealous, <laughs> but, but yeah. So I'm a little resentful that I don't work in some literary context, but I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I'll, I'll recover from that. So that's about it for me. I'm not tagging anybody. Uh, there's been so many people that have done this tag and I've loved watching them. I absolutely love hearing these answers, so hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below what any of your answers to any of these questions would be or what you think about any of my answers. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.